Good day, sir and class. My name is Maya Russell, and today I will be presenting alongside Naval Cadet Yim, Officer Cadet Frampton, and Officer Cadet Lafort on the topic of recruiting and retention in the Canadian Armed Forces. Good day, sir and class. My name is Maya Russell, and today I will be presenting alongside Naval Cadet Yim, Officer Cadet Frampton, and Officer Cadet Lafort on the topic of recruiting and retention in the Canadian Armed Forces. Here is an overview of what we'll be covering today. We will begin with a company overview and their strategic objectives. Then we will go into our situational analysis, then our SWOT, followed by our PESTEL, and then an STP analysis and financial report. We will give our conclusions, and finally, we will present our recommendations. I'm now going to hand it off to Naval Cadet Yim, who will begin with the company overview and strategic objectives. The Canadian Armed Forces is a long-standing service of Canada which works in conjunction with the Department of National Defence. In recent years, they have faced severe recruitment and retention issues which have led to the understaffing of several occupations. The force is currently led by General Jay Vance as the Chief of Defence Staff, with notable top officers such as the Vice Chief of Defence Staff, General Lantier, and the Commander of the Royal Canadian Navy, Admiral Art MacDonald. Under the command of these officers, the CAF operates both domestically and globally with operations such as Carib, Projection, and Reassurance. The mission statement of the CAF is to defend our country, its interests, and its values while contributing to international peace and security. In addition, policies spearheaded by General Vance such as Operation Honor ensure that the Canadian military remains a workplace free of sexual misconduct. Operations such as Honor and Carib work towards the current defense policy of Strong, Secure, Engaged which in turn reflects the governmental vision of strong at home, secure in North America, and engaged in the world. To keep the CAF strong at home, they have had a mission to improve recruitment and retention. In order to carry out this mission, their goals have been to increase the number of personnel, improve female representation, reduce training time, and to implement the retention plan. With regards to the internal component of the situational analysis, um, we found that the statistical objectives were given but with no strategy in place. Um, an example of this would be that 25% of the CAF should be made up of women. However, there was actually no strategy put in place to recruit more women to meet that objective. Uh, secondly, it would be a lack of training for recruitment staff. Uh, across Canada, there's budget cuts to decrease the amount of actual recruitment centers, uh, as well the staff did not have the proper tools to allow them to succeed in recruiting more members. As well, uh, we have applicants not finishing their recruitment phase, so we have people who, you know, walk into a recruitment center but uh, don't actually make it to the basic training portion of their training. For the external, uh, component, we found that there was positive public support for the military. Uh, after the whole Somalia affair, uh, you know, the public view of the military had gone down, but post Afghanistan, uh, there was a positive uh, support and uh, people were more willing to join the military. Um, funding, funding, while it's still very low uh, and there's still budget cuts, um, we still find that the funding is larger than there has been in previous years. As well, uh, public perception of the military. So uh, that kind of sounds like uh, my first point there. However, I mean in the context that women feel as if they perceive the military to be a male-dominant you know, career, uh, where we have to change that, that perception. Uh, yeah. Using a SWOT analysis is a great tool for strategic planning. It helps us identify the CAF's strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, in this case related to product planning for recruiting and retention. As for strengths, the CAF has the ability to select and develop thousands of recruits each year. They have the infrastructure and budget to train their members. Also, the CAF offers a variety of occupations, 95 to be exact. Each occupational trade is unique, and this allows them to offer jobs that can be appealing to a variety of people. The Canadian Armed Forces definitely has the resources, personnel, and infrastructure to develop and implement various recruiting and retention initiatives. 
As for weaknesses, the Canadian Armed Forces has not established implementation plan to increase recruits, more specifically females. Also, the audit found that they struggled to attract qualified applicants because candidates cannot easily access pertinent information on the recruiting process and occupations. Additionally, the recruiting process to join the CAF is lengthy, and there are delays during key periods. There have been instances where recruits have moved on to other opportunities as a result of this. This impacts the CAF's ability to bring in qualified candidates. Once people get into the CAF, there are significant time delays for members to get occupation training. Finally, the CAF is not very diversified when it comes to visible minorities. For example, only 14% of the CAF is female. As for opportunities for the CAF, as for opportunities for the CAF when it comes to recruiting, the CAF can recruit more women and visible minorities to diversify their workforce. And finally, for threats, the Canadian Armed Forces competes with other employers for recruits. This is especially prevalent with candidates who have high skill levels and experience. A PESTEL analysis gives us a framework to analyze key macroenvironmental factors such as politics, economy, social factors, technology, environment, and law, which are external factors that influence the Canadian Armed Forces. I'll start with political factors that influence the CAF. The Canadian Armed Forces is a reflection of the government's priorities. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau vowed to have a cabinet that was diverse in order to be reflective of Canada and its citizens. As a result, the Canadian Armed Forces is also striving to, diver to diversify by having more women and other visible minorities in their ranks. An initiative is currently in place to increase the number of women by 1% each year in the CAF, with the end goal of the CAF being 25% female by 2026. Moving on to economic factors. The economy relates to funding and employment factors for the CAF. The funding that the CAF receives is dependent on economic conditions and trends. An economy in recession will result in funding being cut. The Department of National Defense, or D&D, receives the highest budget in the federal government. Being that Canada was not in recession during the 2019-20 period, D&D's budget was 7.3% of the total main estimates for Canada, with approximately 37% of that spent on personnel. In times of economic growth, more can be spent on national defense. Employment factors related to the CAF's recruiting would be Canadians who are unemployed and looking to enter the job market. In 2019, the unemployment rate in Canada was 5.7%. Specifically for key recruiting segments, the percentage of unemployed women was 5.3% and First Nations was 11.7%. For social factors, the CAF wants to diversify and intends to on achieving this by recruiting women and other visible minorities. Also, to be eligible to join the CAF, candidates must be between the ages of 16 and 57, which helps narrow down and focus recruiting efforts. Additionally, a current popular social trend in the job market is a rise in the need for specialists in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, also known as STEM. Being that the CAF has various occupational trades that relate directly to STEM, for example, combat engineering, this is a trend that will definitely impact hiring patterns. As for technology, present-day design and IT has advanced past what the CAF currently uses for the website, leading to criticism regarding its effectiveness and readability. In their response to this criticism in the audit report, they said that they will work to remedy this. When it comes to the environment, the Canadian Forces recruiters operate in both urban and rural areas. They have central recruiting offices as well. And finally, for legal factors that influence the CAF's recruiting, the Canadian Forces is bound to comply with the Employment Equity Act. This requires that Canadian Forces identify and eliminate employment barriers and take appropriate measures in order to ensure women and other visible minorities are represented. The military aims to do this while maintaining operational effectiveness. When employed by the Canadian Forces, members have employee rights afforded to them to ensure a safe work environment and employee benefits. Moving on to the STP analysis, starting with segmentation, we can look at four different segments that we are interested in recruiting and retaining in the Canadian Armed Forces. Starting with demographic, 
We need to focus on the overall representativeness of the Canadian public's demographics in the Canadian Armed Forces, especially with an emphasis on female representation, Aboriginal peoples, and various other minority groups in Canada, such as Asians, Latin American, and Blacks. Secondly, we have geographic. The geographic segment that we are interested in includes all across Canada, with an emphasis on diverse cities such as Toronto and Vancouver, which will help us reach the representativeness goal. Thirdly, we have the psychographic segment. People that work well in team environments are who we are mostly interested in. These people will be good leaders and good followers, which means that they can handle adversity well and respond positively to challenges and challenging situations. Finally, we have the behavioral segment. This is much more general, but the CAF needs people who are interested and committed to what their prospective trades could be and what they apply for and what we target them for. Moving on to targeting. In order to reach the demographic and geographic goals put forth in the report, the Canadian Armed Forces should target recruitment for first and second generation Canadians, women and First Nations groups. On the other hand, to reach the psychographic and behavioral goals, we could recruit high school graduates as they are still young, impressionable, and have a career ahead of them. Specifically from high schools, we can recruit members of sports teams, clubs, or those students who are employed. These people will be conditioned to work as a team in pressured environments. Next, we have positioning. The Canadian Armed Forces can pos position themselves as they are known for with well-paid employment with many social benefits, including health care and family health care. The Canadian Armed Forces is a place where you can have a rewarding job and have the freedom to pursue your own hobbies and interests. The Canadian Armed Forces should also prove that it is a place where people can continue to grow and follow passions as well as learn new passions and new skills. Moving on to the financial report, we have two main options either increase spending or maintain spending. Looking under the increase spending, which is much more likely needed to reach the recruitment and retainment goals, the Canadian Armed Forces recruitment shortage is mostly caused by budget cuts. Therefore, if we simply invest more money into recruiting processes, advertising, the number of recruitment positions and hours, we can therefore be able to process more and more recruits. Another thing that we can do to increase the retention rates that they have is to increase pay for specialist trades in order to compete with very similar civilian trades, such as aircraft construction and etc. This would be costly, but we predict predict that it would produce high returns on our inv investment in regards to retention by first of all getting the right people for the job and then keeping them. What we can do to maintain spending is to use a lean thinking business strategy or recruiting st strategy, meaning that we can spend less money recruiting on a broad scope and more money recruiting on people that are predisposed or more likely to join. For this, we can cut recruiting for people with dependents, such as family families, which cost a lot more to move and adapt and in healthcare. Focus on recruiting in high schools as people there have not started or not likely started careers. And we can also advertise cheaply towards them by simply putting up posters or banners in sports uh, facilities such as gymnasiums. This would add little to no extra cost and would allow us to maintain the same level of spending as before with targeting people that would be more likely to join and would be very beneficial and serve long careers in the Canadian Armed Forces. Conclusions. 
So we noticed that there was a growing gap from the benchmark. So not only were we not meeting the uh, threshold for maintaining our force, we were falling much short of that. Uh, and the goal is to actually have 5,000 more members than we currently have. Uh, the second point would be that we do not have proper training uh, or the proper investments into the recruitment process. So uh, there isn't enough money or, or emphasis going into um, getting people in the door and getting people to sign the dotted line into the training phase. Um, if we focus more on that, then we can at least get more people in and have more possibility for people to, to join the force. Uh, thirdly, we have developing more methods to attack various demographics, such as women and visible minorities. So uh, while there has been um, several, uh, you know, statistics put out that they want to meet objectives, uh, they have not made any actual methods uh, to, to attract these members. Um, so one of those things that we're going to have to re recommend would be to uh, work on that. And lastly, focus on career development and, and keeping the people that we have. So retention uh, has fallen short while uh, post Afghanistan, there aren't as many uh, deployments on the rise. Uh, lots of people with PTSD, uh, underlying issues, um, and don't want to be part of the force anymore. We have to focus on keeping those people before we even try to recruit more people because uh, it would be difficult to train those individuals without having a backbone already in the force. We have made recommendations based on our conclusions. We are going to focus on two recommendations, one for recruiting and the other for retention in the Canadian Armed Forces. Our first recommendation with regards to recruiting is to launch an advertising campaign with the main focus being the recruitment of women. This recommendation addresses a couple of our conclusions. With the existence of the gap in the benchmark for personnel and the fact that the CAF needs to be more creative in developing new methods to attract various demographics, such as women and visible minorities, social media is a good place to start. Social media has proven to be an effective way to advertise to the masses. In Canada, millions of people use social media regularly to seek entertainment, get access to new information, and connect with like-minded people. Popular social media platforms that the CAF will use for the campaign include, but is not limited to, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. The CAF will create and share 30-second to 3-minute long videos showcasing females working in the CAF who have hobbies, interests, and ultimately lives outside of their work. This will show women that they can join the CAF and still maintain a good work-life balance. Our second recommendation, which is related to retention, is to implement a pay increase of 5% over a five-year period for CAF members. This will show that the CAF is willing to invest in the people they already have. An increase in pay can be a great incentive for people to stay in the organization. Each year, the pay will increase by 1% until an increase of 5% is achieved. For a member to receive the whole 5% raise, they need to stay for the whole five period. We believe it is the key for increasing retention. By increasing employee benefits, employees will feel more appreciated and it also connects to the recruiting side. Higher wages will help incentivize people to want to join the Care Forces. Now I'm going to outline our implementation plans for our recommendations. We have divided the implementation plan for the launch of the CAF's advertising campaign focused on the recruitment of women into three time periods. During the short term, which we will define as three months, the videos will be designed and created by teams of public affairs officers, personal selection officers, and their support teams. In the medium term, which we will define as one year, the campaign will officially kick off and videos will be posted on various social media sites. A minimum of 10 different videos will be created and will be released on a staggered time frame to ensure new content is constantly being released. During this period, more videos will also be created for the phase two release. In the final long-term phase of 15 months, the new set of videos will be released. We have also
We have also divided the implementation plan regarding the implementation of the 5% pay increase over a five-year period into three parts. After the pay grid and salary increase structure has been approved, in the short term, which is one year, pay will increase by 1%. Each year, pay will increase by 1% until the 5% pay increase is accomplished. During our medium term, which we define as years two to four, the CAF will also reevaluate specialist trade pay. The CAF needs to be competitive with civilian employers when it comes to paying highly skilled workers in desired fields. We will now outline our evaluation and control measures. For our social media campaign, its success will be evaluated based on engagement and views online. Specific targets will be set for viewing. We've also divided this into three parts. During the medium term, we will begin looking at numbers for new applications. We want to see how many female applications are being submitted, compare that to what they were before, and ensure there is an increase. Specific targets for how many more women we want to apply by this period will be set, which we will use as a benchmark. This will help us evaluate the success of the campaign. As for the pay increase that will help with retention rates in the CAF, after the pay increase begins to roll out, we will begin conducting surveys to get feedback from CAF members. The first survey will be released after year two, and the second one will be released after the final increase in year five. The purpose of these surveys is to monitor employee satisfaction. That concludes our presentation. That concludes our presentation. We would like to thank you for your attention and we'll now open the floor.